We're good to go. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome here. Hopefully, we can uh, we can all fit and everybody can hear and see everyone. To begin, I would just uh, like to acknowledge that we are on we are gathered on the lands of the Blackfoot people and of the Canadian Plains and pay respect to the Blackfoot people, past, present, and future, while recognizing and respecting their cultural heritage beliefs and relationship to the land. And we also acknowledge that this is the home of the Métis Nation of Lethbridge, or of Alberta Region 3. And we thank them for their participation and uh, their partnership with us as the government of Alberta. I would like to bring forward Chief Weaselhead to give brief remarks and say a prayer, if you would. Thank you very much. That's a gate for you. Let, let me uh, quickly uh, say that uh, the land uh, here uh, that we uh, are on uh, is, is very, very dear to the uh, Blackfoot Conf Confederacy, uh, home of the uh, Treaty 7 Indi Indigenous people, you know. And I also want to acknowledge, you know, the relationship that we have been able to build over the many, many years, especially with the city of Lethbridge, you know. Sikukutuki, that's the Indian name for Lethbridge, co of the operation that we had over the years, you know. I want to just quickly acknowledge our, our dignitaries that are here with us today on this special occasion. This event, you know, that's going to mark uh, our step forward with regards to what's been uh, uh, one of the most traumatic uh, incidents that happened to uh, especially our indigenous people and people that are addicted to uh, drugs and uh, al alcohol in general as well too. So again, I'm very pleased to be here with you today on behalf of the uh, Kainai First Nations, uh, on behalf of the uh, Blackfoot Confederacy and the uh, Treaty 7 uh, people. We wish you uh, a very happy occasion. We welcome you uh, to be w with us today as we uh, celebrate the uh, saw turning and eventually the uh, facility being built here in Lethbridge. And we look forward for the uh, continued relationship that we have, as we all know that we are going to build uh, one in, uh, in Kainai back home as well too. So we're looking forward to that, you know, so thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Weaselhead. So while uh, I will do the welcomes first, I will acknowledge all of my, uh, my colleagues here. We have Minister Panda, Minister of Infrastructure, Associate Minister Ellis of Mental Health and Addictions, Parliamentary Secretary Jeremy Nixon for Mental Health and Addictions. We have Joseph Scow, MLA for Carson Siksika. We have Grant Hunter, MLA for Tabor Warner. And we have Mayor of Lethbridge, Blaine Higgin here as well. To begin with our remarks, I would invite Minister Panda to come and share some of his, his comments with everyone. Thank you, Emily Newdorf. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to thank uh, Chief uh, Wieselhead for, uh, for bringing the greetings on behalf of uh, First Nations community and also for the prayer and the blessings this morning. I would also like to acknowledge my colleagues, uh, Minister Ellis, um, and uh, MLA Nixon, MLA Joseph Scow, and my good friend uh, MLA Grant Hunter just reminded me it is uh, part of his constituency. But uh, being, uh, um, you know, MLA for Lethbridge, it's always good to join you for all the events in uh, southern Alberta. And today is an important day for Lethbridge and area residents as we prepare to start construction of uh, Alberta's latest symbol of hope, the Lethbridge Residential Addictions Treatment Center will help Albertans, and this project uh, is an identified need in your community. This project is uh, part of our government's commitment to providing modern public infrastructure and to increasing the accessibility to programs and services for people experiencing addiction and mental health challenges. We are committed to have uh, construction completed and have uh, this residential treatment facility up and running as soon as possible. Construction is slated for completion later this year. 
then the facility will uh, be handed over to the operator through my colleague ministerialist department for opening and uh, operations and to help support Albertans on their road for uh, recovery. Building needed uh, public infrastructure not only addresses identified needs in the community, it also creates good paying jobs and this project will also support approximately 100 well-paying construction and construction related jobs. It also attracts uh, investment into our communities and is an integral part of Alberta's economic recovery. These projects protect the livelihoods of tradespeople and others employed directly and indirectly in Alberta's construction uh, industry. Most of the wages that are paid to workers on this project predominantly stay here in Lethbridge and the local area. And your worship, you will be happy to know this is going to create 100 local jobs. And uh, those wages will flow out to the local communities, businesses and services they support as, as uh, they go about their daily lives. So this is keeping our friends and neighbors working and local businesses and communities alive. So Alberta government has uh, branded these projects like the uh, like this uh, recovery uh, community center here as part of Alberta's recovery plan that uh, that works in two scenes on uh, two senses on a on a project like this. We are both helping the economic recovery from the pandemic and we are helping Albertans who suffer with uh, addictions uh, recover from their horrible illness. So in that sense, um, it, this project is very important. Um, and, and I would like to thank all the local MLAs, uh, MLA Scow, MLA Hunter and, uh, and uh, MLA Newdorf for their strong advocacy for funding this project. And as construction starts, I'll continue to monitor the development of this important project very closely. And I know these uh, local MLAs I mentioned will also keep a close eye um, to watch the construction progress. And I can assure you that I'll do everything I can to make sure that we keep this project on schedule and on budget. And I know the contractor and uh, others involved here have the same goal, and I look forward to the day when we celebrate the handover of this new facility to Alberta Health. Thank you all, and I'll ask uh, my colleague, Minister Ellis, uh, Associate Minister of uh, Mental Health and Addictions, to come and give, uh, bring his greetings. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, being here. This is a very, very exciting day. Um, I'd like to thank, of course, my colleagues for being here. I know they've been mentioned quite a bit. Uh, Emily Newdorf, uh, always great to see you. Uh, of course, uh, the mayor and uh, my, my friends from uh, the Blood uh, Tribe Department, uh, Chief Weaselhead, thank you so much. I'm uh, always excited um, about uh, opportunities like this. Um, you know, the illness of addiction, this continues to have a significant impact on the city of Lethbridge. Uh, its residents and, of course, surrounding communities here in southern Alberta. People with addiction are struggling to survive this uh, deadly and progressive illness while residents are struggling uh, with the impacts that addiction and drugs are having on the cities and, and the community at large. Addiction is an illness that requires treatment with appropriate treatment, recovery can, and of course should be expected. This is why our government is building a comprehensive recovery-oriented continuum of care that provides everyone the opportunity to recover. Recovery is possible for everyone and everyone deserves that opportunity to get their lives back and give back to the community. In support of the Vision Alberta, uh, Alberta's government is building a recovery communities right across this province. And today marks the beginning of a construction on the Lethbridge recovery community. This brand new 50 bed long term treatment center will nearly double addiction treatment capacity in the Lethbridge region and will provide a supportive environment for Albertans in their pursuit of a new life. It will uh, be a place where people will have the time, the resources, the tools, and a strong community to help them recover from the illness of addiction. 
This holistic approach means that people will receive support in all areas of their life. The goal, of course, for everyone who enters is to leave not only healthy in recovery, but employed, housed, in school or in training with new connections in the surrounding community. These centers are the first of, of its kind right here in Alberta. Once the doors to the Lethbridge Recovery Community open the spring of 2023, up to 200 Albertans will be able to pursue recovery from addiction right here in Lethbridge every year. This in addition to the hundreds of publicly funded spaces that already exist in partnership with local nonprofits like Fresh Start, Lethbridge, Southern, uh, Southern Alcare Manor, the Foothills Detox in Fort McLeod, uh, the, the Bringing Home the Spirit Home Program on the Blood Tribe, and of course, many others. And like all of our publicly funded residential addiction treatment facilities, access to the Lethbridge Recovery Communities will be free for all Albertans. And I think that is one of the main keys and takeaways. No one should have to stop paying uh, their bills, sell their house, or take on crushing debt to access life-saving treatment. And on the other hand, nobody should be forced to live in chronic homelessness in a perpetual state of drug abuse because they cannot access health care. Recovery is possible, and helping Albertans recover from addiction and mental health challenges remains one of this government's highest priorities. Breaking ground on this new facility will bring us a step closer, giving more Albertans the chance to deserve and pursue recovery. So thank you to the people of Lethbridge for welcoming us here in this community. It's my hope that this project will provide a beacon of hope for the people of Lethbridge to rally around to support people in their pursuit of recovery from the illness of addiction. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Ellis and Minister Panda for those remarks. This is really an exciting day uh, for the, the spectrum of care for people struggling with mental health or addictions. And I'm very excited to uh, now welcome to the podium Mayor Blaine Higgin for some of his remarks. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, ministers. Thank you, MLAs. And thank you, Chief Wiesa. I appreciate those uh, opening remarks and the prayer. Thank you very much for that. Folks, we understand this, is, this has been a struggling time for, for our community, and especially throughout this opioid crisis. But not only that, it's even greater with COVID and the addictions that we're suffering throughout our community has been nothing short of devastating. And looking behind us here, this is nothing, nothing short of amazing. It's, it's uh, I come to you a little bit emotional because it's been something, it's been a battle for quite some time to come to this point. And to see this, it's, it's, uh, it's nothing short of, of amazing. And so on behalf of Lethbridge City Council, thank you, Alberta government, for coming, helping us in our community as we try to recover from this pandemic. Thank you. So uh, very quickly, on behalf of my, my other colleagues, uh, Emily Hunter for allowing us into his constituency. Uh, Emily, um, Joseph Scow, I knew that. I really did. Uh, this has been, this has been a, a very difficult uh, few years, as, as Lethbridge in particular, but all of us in the South have uh, faced the great challenge uh, of mental health and addictions and what that has, has done to our population, the people that have suffered from from this affliction and and our cities and communities and how to better manage their recovery and treatment. Uh, this is something we've advocated for. This is something that uh, has faced a lot of scrutiny, not just here locally, but throughout the province, uh, across the country, and at some points even around the world. So the efforts put forward by the ministers and our government to bring a, a full response, uh, extending all of those levels of uh, treatment and recovery has been phenomenal and the investment made here in southern Alberta uh, is commensurate to the need which I think is is what's most relieving that we can actually all go back to Edmonton and go back to our home ridings after that and and feel that we've we've made a substantial 
step in the right direction and made a difference in people's lives. And for that, I hope, uh, I know I'm truly grateful and I believe my colleagues are grateful. And uh, when we've had the opportunity to visit the, the facilities that are already at work, to see that expanded to more people and to see their lives recovered, I think we can all take great pride in and uh, know that we've made a difference in our, our communities. And that's partly what got us all involved in, in public service in the first place, is to make a difference in people's lives. Uh, at this point, I believe that we will be going to a short uh, question and answer uh, with, with the media. I will invite Ministers Panda and Ellis to the podium and uh, we will we'll have Hayden take care of the, the order of questions Just raise a hand and we yeah, we'll try to do that. So, ministers? We have a point. Hi, uh, David Opinko, Lethbridge News Now. Um, can you just talk about um, what exactly kinds of services will be offered in this facility? I, I differ. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a wide range of treatment services. Of course, the goal is to, uh, as I mentioned uh, in my, my speech, we, we, you know, we, we talk about the continuum of care, right? So we're, we're helping people with whatever challenges they have with their uh, addiction or, or mental health issues. Um, the road to recovery, um, you know, helps them to get, get employed or in training or, um, you know, part of the continuum of care is, is, is of course, housing. So it's a, it's a wide range of, of treatment um, that uh, with the ultimate goal of helping people with the illness of addiction. And uh, as far as people getting into the facility, would they have to be referred by some kind of a service provider or no. how? No, uh, we're uh, we're working, of course, and uh, if you are aware, uh, we have uh, on the books here something called My Recovery Plan, and uh, this is uh, going to be a, a, an option um, uh, for folks to uh, download that will be able to uh, track as to, you know, uh, waiting lists, as an example, what facilities are, are open or not open uh, as far as... Uh, um, uh, waiting lists as an example sorry cars always going by here but uh but yeah no it's it's uh you know or you can just call call fresh start it's really as simple as that i mean this is it's not meant to be complex uh, we're trying to make this as easy as possible i mean that's one of the reasons why we you know we're able to streamline the 211 system as an example right and get rid of the multitude of different numbers and streamline that just simply to 211 it's no different you know even through calling 21 they can they can hook you up to uh you know whatever's available even in this neighborhood Uh, I think there's a uh, an RFP that's going to be going out, and so there's no uh, decisions at this time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Michael Hayden makes his way um, across to this microphone. Uh, for the sake of the recording, I will just reiterate that the question from the media was um, whether the new treatment centre would be operated by AHS or Fresh Start, and um, Associate Minister Ellis did confirm that an RFP would be going out. It's going to play a huge role in addressing these issues. You, you know, we've 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 talked over the past uh, numerous years, and I know, and serving previously as, as councillor before mayor, it's been a struggle in our community, and it's and it's something that uh, we need to come together on. And uh, the recovery-based approach is something that I've I've always appreciated, and how that was presented um, uh, to us as as council. And I had the opportunity of a couple weeks ago here of attending a recovery summit in Calgary. And I must say that it's probably been the number one uh, uh, conference that I've ever attended on council or as being mayor. And that recovery approach, it gives those the opportunity that are struggling with addiction to find a way back to the lives that they do deserve. 
and and it just wasn't happening before and so this recovery based approach is extremely important and we're doing all we can to make sure we get those those individuals that are struggling to the care that they need so again they can return to the lives that they do deserve It is my understanding it's open to everyone. It's open to everyone. Yeah. 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 Why don't we take uh, one more question if anyone has one? Um, yeah, I guess just in terms of the dollar investment, uh, how large of an investment is this going to be? So it's uh, $18 million, and we're going to create uh, 50, 50 beds yeah. to start with. And the construction, as you know, we are going to put shovels in ground today and we'll try to finish it uh, by end of the year and then hand over to health. And then they'll start operations early next year. Thank you. All right, why don't we uh, get everyone to grab their shovels and... I, I also want to thank uh, folks from Alberta Infrastructure, Alberta Health, to make this happen today. Thank you all. background.